Well, so if you're in the market for a compact crossover compact SUV, you already have almost 10 or 11 choices. And if you still want more choices, then Citro has got in the C3 for you. Uh, now, officially, they're not really calling it an SUV, but it is a compact crossover. It's not really a hatchback. It's not really an SUV, but it is a compact crossover. So let's put it in that category. Uh, this car will take on the likes of the Tata Punch and the Maruti Suzuki Ignis. So it's somewhere between the Swift and the Beleno. And it'll take on those two cars uh, because, as I said, it's not your traditional hatchback and it's not really your traditional uh, SUV. Now, in terms of the looks, what do you think of the looks on the front end? I think it looks very different from the usual. If you are someone who enjoys uh, different things in life, you want you know, your cars to be uh, standing out from a sea of other SUVs, then you'll really enjoy the looks of this car. Uh, on the front end, you get this uh, dual chrome uh, grille. It looks very nice. And of course, you get the Citra badge in the middle. Lots of styling elements happening over here in the middle of the grille. And uh, this, of course, trapezoid design is quite nice. There's also a trapezoid uh, covering up the fog lamps and it's in orange but you can get it in the same color as the bumper because this one is of course with the dual shade then as you can see the roof also is in orange so it's a sporty looking design uh, this is the base version of the car it's uh, the non-turbo version so the non-turbo base version gets 15 inch wheels and you get uh, plastic covers on those wheels you don't really get uh, the proper halo wheel treatment which you get on a lot of other cars and again there's another trapezoid over here on the lower part of the front door now talking about the side profile it's a very flat design nothing really too much in it but of course the roof rails add a little bit of pizzazz a little bit of you know differentiating factor and blacken out effect over here the cool quotient again is over here the citron badge or the citron word is inside the lamps so in case uh, your neighbor drives up and he doesn't know which car you've bought you, they know it's a citron from a side end and the back end also has a lot of citron badging and c3 logo is there as well what do you think of the looks of this car well, I think it looks different from the usual. It's a very stylish looking car. And if you are someone who's a fan of different design, different kind of uh, stuff, and you want your car to stand out, definitely the C3 uh, will not be mistaken for any other car out there on the road. Anyways, it's time to drizzle now. And a uh, little bit of rain is always a sign of blessing. So maybe there's blessing on this car from up above. And you can also bless us by supporting this channel, by subscribing to this channel, and by liking this channel and sharing this video with all your friends. Let's jump inside the car, show you the interiors now and then take it for a spin. My name is Ashish Masih. If you come here for the first time, please subscribe to this channel and also follow me on Instagram. That's a small request and bless us on YouTube. I'm sure by now, all of you are aware that Budmo are the all in expert when it comes to spare parts. And the best point is that they have the spare parts for all vehicles available in India. So even if your car is out of production now, maybe you have a large generation model, even then, they have the spare part available, they have the entire catalogue and the best point is that uh, they have the same spare part from a host of different component makers which gives you great flexibility in the pricing overall. So check them out today, check out the app, it's available both for iOS as well as Android devices and also check out the website for the latest schemes as well as offers. Well, so if you're someone who always, uh, you know, enjoys funky designs, unique designs, something different from the usual, then you'll really enjoy the cabin of this car. It's very funky, very different and uh, stands out from a sea of other compact crossovers or compact hatchbacks or whatever you want to call them and whatever segment this car is in. But if you're conservative, if you're very, you know, conservative in taste, then uh, all this might look a little too much, a little too much in your face. Uh, now, let's highlight some good points. Plastic quality on the whole is quite good and uh, it is quite nice. Some hard plastics are there, but they're on the lower part of the dashboard and uh, you really don't see them too often. Uh, the other good point is that the spaces are quite good, nice and deep glove box. You also get a good place to keep your bottles in the door bins. Uh, lots of places over here where you can keep your odds and ends. So in terms of storage places, practicality wise, it's a good car. One more area where it's good is in the touchscreen department. It's a 10 inch touchscreen, so it looks uh, quite nice and quite uh, elegant and it's quite easy to operate as well uh, and uh, that's about it because uh, there are some things which aren't that great for example the uh, digital cockpit over here the digital gauges I think they could have been a little better they look from a very you know cheap car not cheap but let's say uh, value conscious car and this is going to be a very value focused car but even then this could have been slightly better and also I didn't like the design of the rotary knobs they're too plain Jane and could have been better in terms of the design Seats uh, are decent uh, and uh, they're just about decent because the cushioning and the padding could have been better. But again, it depends on the costing of the car. But even for a car which, you know, this car will take on the Tata Punch, to be honest. And for a car to take on the Punch, the seat comfort should be good because Tata makes really very good seats. And these ones just feel a little soft and could have been better 
in terms of the cushioning also the big negative is that you don't get adjustable headrest you only get fixed headrest so which is a bit of a downer in today's day and age anyways guys uh, that's my take on the interior you can also get this in black before i forget uh, don't think that this is the only car available you can get it in black as well and uh, that might uh, you know make it look a little more easy on the eye because orange isn't to everybody's taste that's for sure uh, what do you think of the interiors i think uh, seven and a half out of ten is the correct score to give it as i said before if you're a fan of uh, funky different from the usual you know dynamic uh, designs then you'll enjoy it but of course if you are someone who's conservative in taste and nature like me then uh, you might just say it's a little bit too much in your face anyways now let's jump in the back seat and see how good that really is Well, so even now in the back seat of the C3 and the front seat has been adjusted for my height and driving position. My height for reference is 5'10". Uh, so in case your chauffeur is also 5'10 or whoever is driving in the front is 5'10, uh, then this is the amount of space you'll get over here. Knee room is quite okay and headroom also is quite decent because it is a tall car. If you're about 6 or 6'1, you might just feel your head uh, brushing against the roof if you're about 6'1 that is. But uh, other than that, if you're about 5'8, 5'9, 5'10 like me, then it shouldn't be a problem. There is a bit of a lump in the floor panel. It's a very small lump. Uh, so whoever's sitting in the middle will just have to struggle a bit. It's not a very wide car at the back. It's decent. But ideally, only two occupants at the back is something that you'll appreciate. And the third one uh, will, you know, have to jostle for space at the back. You don't get AC vents at the back because as I said before, this is uh, going to be at a budget end of the market. Uh, nice big windows, but uh, the backrest angle is slightly inclined. You would have wanted it to be a little more inclined. And again, big negative on this car is you don't get adjustable headrest, fixed headrest, which is a big negative. And of course, the backrest angle also is a little too inclined for my liking. Anyways, just like the front seat, I think the back should get a decent score of 7.5 out of 10, but it could have been much improved. And of course, if they had given uh, adjustable headrest and a little better in terms of the backrest angle, I would have given it 9 out of 10. Anyways, now let's check out the boot of this car and then take it out for a spin. Uh, now, in terms of the overall capacity, it's 315 litres. In uh, real world conditions, this is the kind of uh, boot it is. So you can see one large bag, one medium sized bag and one small bag is over here. And I think it can easily accommodate another three of the same shape and size. Uh, so it's a good boot in terms of overall capacity. There's a bit of a ledge here, but it's not too deep. So you can easily heave your uh, stuff over it. Now, if you're the loss coming for about a couple of weeks, then her saman, her luggage will easily accommodate into this. But of course, if she is coming for maybe a month, then you'll need an extra taxi at the airport just to haul her luggage. It's quite decent, uh, don't get me wrong. But yes, of course, uh, it's a good car then for your mother-in-law because you don't want her to stay for more than a month. Anyways, now enough uh, silly jokes about mother-in-laws. Let's get to the driving bits of the C3. <music> Well, so let's quickly talk about the driving bits of the Citro C3. Uh, now, no matter which engine you choose, the turbo or the non-turbo, the highlight of this package is the comfort. Yes, the comfort of this car is truly exceptional. And uh, Citro talks about the magic carpet ride. And I have to say that it's not only a marketing gimmick, it actually works on the C3. We've already seen it on the C5. Uh, and even this car, it feels like uh, it is riding on uh, a magic carpet uh, and uh, I'm not really exaggerating because if you've driven any car with uh, such a compact wheelbase you would have felt those jhatkas and all those lurches and uh, as you can see the road right now is pretty bad we are driving through a patchwork road lots of ruts and potholes around but even then we aren't feeling those thuds and those noises on the suspension it's a very quiet suspension and it's doing its job quite well and even I have to say that the comfort inside is quite good. It's not just acceptable limits, but it is quite a comfortable car. In fact, you will never feel like you're driving a compact crossover. You'll end up feeling like you're driving a car which is a mid-size SUV. It's really that comfortable in terms of the overall comfort that it has to offer. Uh, what else is there to like about the car? Well, the performance of the turbo that we're driving right now is very good. Uh, it has a six-speed uh, gearbox and uh, the sixth gear actually gives a great flexibility on the highway. Uh, when you're driving this car on the highway doing speeds in excess of 100 kph, the engine is around 2,500-3,000 rpm and that makes uh, the cabin feel quite nice and uh, gives great flexibility to the fuel efficiency as well as well as the engine. So that's something which is quite good about it. Uh, clutch action is nice and light. 
gearbox action though could have been slightly better it's a little notchy and it's not the smoothest unit around i think one of the best units on any cars is on the maruti ignis as well as the honda maze if you've used those gearboxes you will know what i'm talking about and this one is decent but yes could have been slightly better and a little lighter to operate would have been much more appreciated uh performance wise first let's talk about the turbo because this really is the highlight package it's really very good it's a very quick responding engine yes it does need a little bit of throttle inputs and a little bit of revs to get going uh, below 1800 rpm 700 rpm it does uh, need a little spooling of the turbo but once you cross that mark it just feels very lively very good and it's a very quick car before you know it you'll be doing speeds in excess of 90 to 100 kph which are legal speeds in most highways and uh, it is quite a quick car in that department uh, steering wheel response also is quite good and uh, it is accurate steering wheel it's a little light so sometimes uh, you know uh, people who call themselves keen drivers might say well i don't really feel that confident with this steering wheel but it is quite accurate and uh, there's a little bit of body roll but it has to be there because this is a tall car high set car and of course 180 mm of ground clearance is there so a little bit of body roll is quite okay uh, the Honda Turbo version uh, is the engine which a lot of you will also want to buy we drove it in the morning the gray car that we were driving in the morning was the Honda Turbo and uh, i have to say that the Honda Turbo version is decent that's the best word to describe it performance is adequate uh, but yes it doesn't feel very exciting to drive and it's a little underwhelming as well uh, it's also a little noisy once you rev it beyond uh, 2 and a half 3000 rpm the three cylinder unit does get a little noisy so that's something you have to keep in your mind and you will constantly need to shift gears and that's only a five speed unit this is a six speed unit that one that we were driving in the morning is a five speed unit so uh, you will have to constantly shift gears and on the highway also it tends to become a little booby so i would suggest if you can spend a little more money if you can extend your budget get a loan and definitely buy the turbo version of the car you'll really appreciate and enjoy driving this one quite a lot Well, so what else is good about the car? Well, front visibility is quite good. Uh, when you see the front end of the car, you see all the bonnet line. You can see that the first time drivers will be quite happy. Uh, the side mirrors also are nice and decent in terms of size. You can see at the back. That said, though, the C pillars at the back are very chunky, and the fixed headrests really are a bit of a problem because if you're reversing this car, then it can really be an issue. And I'll show that to you uh, when we do a reverse uh, parking over here. When we reverse the car. As you can see now we've stopped over here we're going to stop and uh, take a U turn and reverse uh so now you'll see that we'll put it in reverse and go back on the road we came from and when you reverse first of all you'll see there's no reverse camera view available and second of all you'll see that the back well you, there's a huge blind spot thanks to those big and chunky pillars over there so the C pillars along with those fixed head restraints can be a bit of an issue for first time drivers you really don't know uh where you're going and where the car is in you know relativity to the road out there and uh, well as i said performance really is very good and sometimes you'll just be driving this car off its hoots just because you're enjoying the overall performance overall though in the driving department i'll give this car a decent score of 9 out of 10 the turbo version is 9 out of 10 and the non turbo is 7 and a half out of 10 now let's stop the car and give you a summary <laughs> Well, so if in the market for a stylish looking car, a car which has very good peppy performance with the turbo engine and also offers you decent space, then uh, this is a good package. Pricing is going to be very competitive as well. That's what we believe. Uh and it definitely stands out from a sea of other cars out there on the road. So do keep it in your shortlist if you want all these things. The only issue for some of you might be the dealership network of Citroen isn't as uh, wide as some rivals, but Citroen is taking care of that as well and within the next year or so they're going to more than double up their dealership and service points across the country. So uh that's something which should definitely give you peace of mind as well. Keep this car in your shortlist if you're in the market for a car which stands out from a sea of regular cars out there. Bye for now and thanks so much for watching this video. Mm -hmm.